Welcome to the European Truck Racing Championship finale in France. The legendary Circuit des 24 Heures at Le Mans provides the stage for the last four races of the season. The circuit in the Sarthe region has been one of the world's most important motor racing tracks since 1932. Along with the legendary 24-hour race, the 24 Heures du Camion draws huge crowds to Le Mans. The track races will be staged on the 4.185-kilometre Circuit Bugatti. Several corners and chicanes guarantee thrilling races. The championship title is at the centre of attention this weekend. Adam Lachko from the Czech Republic and Jochen Hahn from Germany are the two remaining contenders for the title. Hahn defended his 35-point lead at Harama and starts as the favourite. This is the, the big difference to all other circuits. Le Mans, you, it's possible to overtake nearly on every corner. From this side, yeah. when you are faster, it's possible to overtake. It will be difficult for Adam Lachko to topple Hahn from his perch under these circumstances. Only 60 points are up for grabs at Le Mans. Making up 35 points on one weekend is almost impossible, barring unforeseen circumstances. When Jochen has some problem, I have chance, but uh, I think Jochen has to uh, concentrate for him and concentrate for absolutely good uh, car. And I think he don't have a problem. And after this, this day, we know who is the champion. Hahn against Lachko, the duel of the season, will be decided at Le Mans. It has been René Reinert's best ETRC season so far. Two triumphs and several podium finishes have propelled the logistics entrepreneur to third place, and the 45-year-old aims to retain his position at Le Mans. As I told you, it was a, a big gap to Norby, also to Steffi. Um, 16 points at the moment. But yeah, it can can happen a lot, so I'm not sure, and I'm not. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I cannot sit down now and relax. I have to work hard with my with my guys all together to have a next good training and good qualifying and also good races. And um, the target is um, yeah, finish the races. Buoyed by his first triumph of the season at Harama, Anthony Janier aims to wrap up more victories in front of his home crowd. I am uh, optimistic. Uh, I hope to uh, finish win uh, for the, the race, uh, for the listen to Marseillaise. <laughs> I, I hope uh, I'm, this morning uh, I'm happy for my track uh, is good, uh, my feeling is good. I hope the, the win uh, today or tomorrow. The battle begins with time, practice and the Super Pole. Who will be starting from pole position, Hahn or Lachko? Hahn is the only driver to beat two minutes and six seconds, securing pole position, whereas Adam Lachko ends up fourth. I'm self wondering about my, my perfect lap. So the lap was without mistake and then you know the time must come, must come. And I look to the dash and I see 2.5. Okay, first. So the problem is the radio with Diana is not so good on the straight there and I must wait a half lap and Diana say, okay, pole position, we are not safe, but it's a good time. So yeah, I'm very happy and, and Adam on the second row, it's also good for me. And yeah, now we clear head, without strategy, go forward and, you know, every time I say the same, but now I say different things. I win the race. The opening race of the weekend. Jochen Hahn is the man who starts on pole position. It looks good. I can win the race. So we will see. And I hope I have no technical and I have a clear head. Make no errors. You know, now I have it in my own hand. Alongside him is Norbert Kish's Mercedes Benz. Third place on the grid for Rene Reinert. And alongside Reinert is Adam Lachko. <laughs> Steffi Halm and Anthony Janiek will be starting from fifth and sixth on the grid. The local hero will be supported by the fans intently. <laughs> the
the race gets underway as the drivers accelerate down the home straight. Jochen Hahn, Norbert Kish and Adam Latchko in close succession. 12,000 horsepower now approaching the first chicane. It's a breathtaking moment and it's going to be very close indeed. Janiek touches the rear of Reinert's truck. Reinert loses control, is hit by Halm and collides with Latchko. Kish takes a shortcut through the chicane and takes the lead. But the Hungarian wants to avoid a penalty and lets Hahn overtake again. They take the next corner in a side-by-side -side battle. Behind them, Hahn touches Jan Eyck, who heads into the gravel trap before returning to the track between Frankie Wojciech and Erwin Klein Nagelvoort. The 2015 champion and the favourite to triumph in the current season stage a thrilling battle. The Hungarian Kish is strong over the first few kilometres at Le Mans, but Hahn prevails in the end. Behind them, Latchko has passed Shane Britton, who gained several positions due to the chaos at the Dunlop S's. The race order on lap one. Hahn in front of Kish, then it's Latchko, Britton fourth, Reinert fifth, followed by Halm and Gert Kurba. But Breton does not retain his position for long. Reinert and Halm pass him before Get Kerber stages his attack. A slight touch and the Iveco driver is alongside Breton. But the Briton ups the ante and prevails over Kerber. Hahn continues to extend his lead. The gap between him and Kish is increasing. Latchko is struggling to match the pace. Reinert and Halm follow him. Behind them, Breton and Kerber. Janiek, who has gained several positions, is behind them. Janiek makes a move to get up alongside Get Korba under braking for the Dunlop S's. They touch, Korba slides, he spins, and the rest of the field go by. Korba retires to the pit lane, furious. Things aren't going so well for Adam Latchko either. The Czech driver is third as Hahn leads the race. This order means the championship title for the German MAN driver with three races still to go. An exciting duel between Alan Law and Sasha Lentz is raging on. They're battling for eighth and that means pole position for race two due to the reverse grid order. Law misses her breaking point. Lentz catches up seeing his chance but the experienced driver based in Monaco fights for her position and the pole position in the next race. Law doesn't back down and repasses Lentz, who remains ninth. <laughs> Meanwhile, up front, Hahn is on his way to the championship title, several seconds ahead of the rest. Latchko remains stuck in third. If they cross the finishing line in this order, Hahn would take 20 points to be 43 clear of Latchko in the standings. With only 40 points up for grabs in the upcoming races, he could no longer be caught for the title. Jochen Hahn takes the last few corners before the finish line with wild sideways drifts. The German driver wraps up his fourth championship title after 2011, 2012 and 2013. Another step on his way to becoming a truck racing legend. The Hahn team celebrates at the end of a thrilling fight for the title in 2016. It's a great day for Hahn racing. It's a big moment in the season, so we fight the complete year hard with Adam only for this. So for the winning and now I win, I'm very lucky. Lucky why, he have one mistake in solder, so the gap is bigger, and now I'm without stress in the last, uh, last race weekend, so first race, European champion, so now I have an easy weekend without stress, and from this side I'm very, very happy to win the title less. Exuberant joy on the podium. Adam Latchko has been a strong and fair opponent throughout the season. He's disappointed, of course, but Latchko too looks back on a very successful season in the Freightliner run by the Bagheera international team. Behind us it's a really nice season. We make a really nice fight with Jochen. I'm very happy with the second position. Okay, when I'm first it's much, much, much better. But I think it's my best season in truck racing. A glance at the result of race one. 
Hahn wraps up the championship title with his triumph at Le Mans. Kish secures second in the race with a strong performance, followed by Lachko third. René Reinert finishes fourth, Steffi Halm is fifth, Janek finishes sixth after an impressive start, with Alan Law and Sasha Lentz completing the top eight. With the reverse grid, race two should be a thriller. The reverse grid for race two, Sasha Lentz is on pole position, Alan Law alongside. On the second row of the grid, Anthony Janek and lining up alongside the Frenchman, Steffi Halm. René Reinert and Adam Lachko share the third row of the grid. The fourth row, Norbert Kisch, the outgoing champion and the freshly crowned European champion, Jochen Hahn. The race gets underway. Alan Law takes the lead on the run towards the first corner. Halm attacks Lentz behind her. Janiek is approaching on the outside line, passing Lentz as he misses the breaking point for the first chicane and collides with Law. Alan takes a shortcut through the chicane but returns to the track as the race leader. Law in the lead, but Lentz is just behind her, waiting for a mistake. The whole field is tightly bunched. Lentz sees a gap and passes the former DTM driver for the lead on lap one. But this is about to change. Janiek misses his braking point again, collides with the race leader Lentz, who slides and hits Law's truck. This is the manoeuvre from Lentz's onboard perspective. The race leader is hit and the chaos begins. The trucks that shared the front row of the grid both end up in the gravel trap, heavily damaged and have to be removed. The race director halts proceedings. A new formation lap without Law and Lentz. Janiek and Harm share the front row, followed by Reinert and Lachko. Behind them, Kish and Harm. Green lights and yet more crashes, this time in the midfield. A chain reaction involving several trucks. Harm in the lead has created a gap, but red flags indicate that the race is once again suspended. The dust has settled. Several trucks, including Lechko's Bagheera, are on the start-finish straight, or beside it. The main thing, nobody is hurt. So what happened? Shane Brereton's on-board view. He accelerates, whereas Lachko fails to get going. Brereton swerves and collides with Wojciech. The same manoeuvre from Lachko's rear-facing perspective. It's tough luck, especially for Wojciech. His truck had only recently been reassembled. The track is cleared once more. Only eight trucks remain. They're ready for the third start of the race as the pace truck leads them round to the end of the formation lap. Janiek makes a good start, battling with Steffi Halm. Reinert is lurking behind them. Janiek passes Halm for the lead into the first chicane. Janiek, Halm, Reinert, Hahn, Kish and Kurba. That's the race order for the next few laps. But Kurba is out of luck at Le Mans. He heads into the pit and retires early in the race. The order of the remaining trucks doesn't change in the course of the race. Janiek wins the race ahead of Halm, Reinert, Hahn and Kish. The French spectators are delighted. I'm happy for my people, uh, my people, my public uh, in my home in Le Mans. I'm uh, very happy for my, my people. Man. I'm not happy for my colleague Lance, uh, the small contact, the, the right corner. Uh, the small, small, small contact, man, the small contact, uh, the big crash uh, with uh, Hélène. Janiek displays muted joy on the podium as the stewards of the meeting discuss the course of events. After their deliberations, the final result looks like this. 
Janiek is disqualified. Steffi Halm is declared the winner. Second goes to Rene Reinert. Third for Jochen Hahn, followed by Kish, Yeri Foreman, Manuel Rodriguez, and then get Kurba. Many of the teams face a long night trying to repair their trucks for the final two races of the FIA European Truck Racing Championship season. While the spectators can think about partying, the teams are going to be busy. Le Mans always comes with a festive atmosphere. The 60,000 spectators stay at the track until the early hours. The show trucks all illuminated during the parade on Saturday evening are worth seeing. Jet propelled show cars and bikes infuse the fans in the grandstands. And the fireworks don't mark the end. The celebrations here go on until the dawn. Everybody returns to the paddock for the supporting race programme. The fans enjoy action galore on the track besides the actual races during the day and also at night. It's impossible to be bored. There's something to be explored everywhere. Up close and personal with the ETRC stars, the autograph sessions in the fan village are real highlights once again. And there's important news for 2017 doing the rounds. Jochen Hahn and Gert Korber are going to drive side by side for Iveco. Jochen will join us uh, and will run also for Iveco next year. So we bring him the number one and the defending European champion for next year. So it's a, it's a great news for us. It's a great news also because Johan is from the same area in Traben in Germany. And uh, we found the same spirit as, uh, as we've got in Traben truck, uh, kind of a family, professional spirit around truck racing, what we enjoy. Uh, and so we will be even more shrubbish next year and uh, we'll definitely uh, have another great pilot with us, two European Championship, Gert and Johan. Back to the racetrack. Light drizzle on the Circuit Bugatti. Jochen Hahn and his wife Diana are in permanent contact during qualifying. But Adam Lachko is faster than the freshly crowned ETRC champion, securing pole position ahead of Kish and Hahn. Slippery on the dry condition is a big different than slippery on the wet condition. And today it's a little bit wet. Uh, lap and lap more. When you drive, it's more and more dry. It's, uh, every lap is faster. And I managed on the first position. I'm very happy with this. And uh, before us, I think maybe interesting race when it's dry. Maybe again, I have <laughs> a little bit slippery and we will see how we finish. Irving Klein Nagelvoort participates neither in the Super Bowl nor in the races after Saturday's crash. His truck is too damaged and can't be repaired on site. The roll cage is too much damage. It is about 50 centimeters to the lamp, to the back. It was too much damage to fix it. Adam Latchko is the pole sitter for race three of the weekend. Norbert Kish is alongside him. Jochen Hahn is third on the grid. Sasha Lentz alongside him after a strong performance in the wet conditions. The third row, Rene Reinert. And alongside him is Gert Korba. At the start, Lachko and Kiss duel for the lead. The Bagheera Freightliner accelerates a little better and Lachko retains the lead. The Hungarian's Mercedes is narrowly in front at the exit of the Dunlop S's though. Lachko reacts and wants to reclaim the lead. He's on a par, but too quick. He fails to take the next corner properly, runs wide and drops to third position. Race leader Kirsch is in front of Hahn and then Lachko. But the Hungarian's delight does not last for long. His engine is making strange noises on the start-finish straight. Dense smoke is billowing from the Mercedes' his back end. Kirsch loses speed, the others pass him. It's a turbo failure. Jochen Hahn takes the lead as Kish retires, opening up a gap back to his pursuers. A trio follows Hahn, as Lachko, Reinert and Kurba in close succession. On board with Yeri Foreman, Sasha Lentz has problems in front of him. Lentz's truck has lost a cooling tank for the brakes. 
Liquid pours out of the back of the truck, causing the MAN driver to slide. The Czech gains another position without a fight. Janjek is now in front of him and hits the gravel trap due to a broken suspension. Foreman moves up to sixth. Hahn at the front of the field is out of sight for his pursuers. Lachko, Reinert and Kurba are still in close succession, but there are no attacks. Hahn dominates the race until the end and is first across the finish line. One day after winning the championship, he wraps up his 100th race triumph. René and, and Adam have a fight behind me, so I control the gap and the first three laps I have time to make a little bit wheel spin and drifting and from this side I'm very happy. It's my 100th winning no. in, my, in my life, so from this side it's a big celebration. European champion, 100 victories, um, I'm very happy for everybody. There are some delighted drivers on the podium after race three here at Le Mans. A look at the result. It's a win for Jochen Hahn with Adam Lachko second, Rene Reiner third from Gert Korber and Steffi Halm with Yeri Foreman sixth, Ellen Law seventh, Shane Brereton takes eighth ahead of Wojciech and Rodriguez with Jon Hemming's repaired truck eleventh. A special guest at Le Mans, five times European truck racing champion Steve Parrish. The TV commentator starts the formation laps with the green flag. I keep an eye on it and I've seen that it's coming back and looking around the paddock now it looks pretty healthy. There's some great teams out there, very well equipped um, and run very professionally. And so it's nice now to see Etra back and things like the, the, the village here that they've got where the fans can come meet the drivers and, and that type of things. The starting grid for the last race of the season, and it's another debut. Shane Brereton is on pole position for the first time. Yeah, I am very nervous, but I'm excited as well. Alongside Brereton, Alan Law will start second, yet to finish on the podium this year. The second row, Yeri Foreman, alongside Steffi Halm. Get Korba and Rene Reinert share the third row. At the start, Alan Law makes use of all of her experience and accelerates better to take the lead. Steffi Halm follows suit and attacks Brereton. The trucks approach the first chicane side by side and touch. Brereton slides and loses second place. A few metres later, Reinert attacks the Briton. He slides yet again and Reinert passes. The Bagheeras are behind him but not for long. Before the end of the first lap, Lachko is alongside Brereton, who opts for the blocking line, and that causes a collision. The MAN slides once again, and the pole position driver is caught up in the smoke. Two women are at the head of the field in the last race of the season. Alan Law is the race leader, followed by Steffi Halm. Rene Reinert is third ahead of Lachko, Hahn and Korba. There are no changes in the next few laps as Law vigorously defends the lead. Steffi Halm keeps looking for a gap without staging any unfair advances. Law is struggling to stay in front of Halm. Shortly before the end, she faces the inevitable. Halm sees a chance and attacks Law, who is in an inferior position for the next corner. She has to yield, and Halm takes the lead. It's a lead she retains to the finish line, sealing a triumph in the last ETRC race this year. Law would love to have won the race, but she can still be very pleased with second place. It was perfect. I had uh, one chance, and I take it, uh, but uh, we both g gave us enough space, so... It was uh, nice to pass her and she was also really happy to finish uh, second. The last podium of the year, the European champion himself sprays the champagne over his rivals. Not a regular occurrence in the ETRC. A race win for Steffi Halm ahead of Alan Law and Rene Reinert. The remaining positions at Le Mans latch go forth, followed by Hahn, Korba, Lentz and Yeri Foreman in eighth from Wojciech and the recovered Breton. Rodriguez and Hemming, 11th and 12th. The final championship standings. Jochen Hahn is the champion on 462 points with a comfortable margin of victory over Adam Lachko. Rene Reinert takes third. A great season of racing in the ETRC.
has been a real spread of drivers in the championship, and that has all served to give us a great year of competition. But at the end of the season, there is a festive event because it's time for the teams, the organisers, the mechanics, the engineers and everybody to get together for the annual prize giving. The prizes galore are handed out, the celebrations last until the small hours. Peace finally descends after a successful 30th ETRC season, but everyone will be yearning soon for the 2017 opener in Spielberg. It has been a year of some great racing. There's more of the same in 2017.